Welcome back to East and West, a show to help us keep our spiritual bearings as we navigate this world around us. Wes Young here. This episode's a little unusual. What I want to do is give you a sample, free sample, of something that released a while back. It was an audio, is an audio book version, an audible version actually, available on Amazon of my debut novel, my first book, which is Reaching Soul. That book came out in 2022, but the Audible version did not release until just a few months back. So I'm going to give you a free sample here. It's nothing you couldn't find online anyway. Audible, when you when you go to Amazon, they give you a free sample you can listen to, see if you like it, whatever. I just thought it'd be fun to release it on the podcast as well. Had a good voice actor, narrator do it. He's a guy from Texas, freelance voice actor. I enjoyed it. It's, it's different. It's a different take on the book and maybe a different experience than reading it. For those of you that already read it off the uh, paperback, you may enjoy this. In any event, Maybe it'll give you something to fill your time with while you wait on my new book, One Story Building, which is releasing later this month. It'll be releasing there middle to late January 2024, and I do hope you'll get a copy of that. Everything's available at westyoungwriter.com. I love writing these books. It's a lot of work, but it's fun telling stories and hopefully making people laugh along the way. Give them a chance if you like, westyoungwriter.com. Here's a sample from Reaching Soul, the audible version, and may God bless you all as your pilgrimage continues. Reaching Soul, a novel. Written by Wes Young. Performed by Charles Conover. A countdown was underway, nearly complete. The mechanized voice rolled on. Eight, seven, six. This can't be, he thought. It's not fair. It's not fair. It's not fair. He knew enough of temporal transport to know that no two prisoners were ever sent to the same time. That was the whole point of the process, to remove the unwanted, to remove them from their present society, and to remove them from each other. Rumors of the horrid side effects of being sent through time, being deposited into some future moment, and marooned there forever, were widespread. No one could verify because no one but Crone agents ever jumped time and actually returned, and Crone was perfectly secretive about such information. It's not fair. It's not fair. It's not fair. To be so irrevocably separated and not even allowed a last look at his boy. Three, two never to see him again, and now only allowed to look at his feet. It's not fair. It's not fair. His mind screamed. Being craned, his mouth could not utter a sound any more than his head could make a move. One. The air turned thick, like water, then gel, then water again. It was hard to see even Soul's feet in the blur. Sound was not blurred, though. It was amplified and made more vivid. A neck could hear the countdown, but there must have been some distortion, for the numbers were out of sequence. Sixteen, seven, fourteen, nine, seven, seven... The air that was water felt too thick to breathe, but he realized also that he was not breathing. Soul was farther away than before, his feet a dim haze in a submerged blurred. Then something broke. Some dam loosed, and the air that was water rushed upward, sucked straight toward the ceiling. But there was no ceiling, only darkness. He could hear clearly, but it was no longer the monotone countdown. There was shouting. He thought that must be it. The water was being sucked away into the darkness, and he could be sucked with it, jolted through time to whatever futuristic nowhere he had been sentenced. But this did not happen. The water went away, yet he remained craned in the chair. He rolled his eyes in every direction, Maddened by his limited range of vision, beyond Soul's feet, 
agents were firing. He wondered what they could possibly be firing at. And then he was loose. Just like that. The crane was released, and he was loose. Instinctively, he made a lunge for his son. As he did, he saw what the agents were doing. Some were watching the door, stingers ready. Others were firing into the chairs, executing the unders. Something had gone wrong. He jumped on top of Sol in a faint hope to block the shots from him. The boy could neither move nor talk. A neck covered him. I've got you, son. He put his hand over Sol's eyes. Then the agents turned to the door as it thumped open. Rushing through it was someone Anak immediately recognized. It was the bearded man who had boarded the tram alone, the one from The Order. He blitzed into the room and somehow went untouched by the stingers. The agents were firing and firing, but he was not brought down. Anak held his hand over Sol's eyes as the man with the beard tossed something in among the agents. Then a flash of light, bright and unbearable. Then the waters returned, and the air disappeared, and the darkness came, and Sol was gone. Hear the whole exciting adventure of Reaching Soul, available at Amazon's Audible or Apple iTunes, or find more at WesYoungWriter.com. <laughs>